better time than now, and there is no better place than here in the people's house for us to take up this call. Because at the end of the day, infrastructure is about jobs. It's about putting to people to work right now, replacing those bridges and roads and dams and airports and rails. But more importantly, it's about getting people to work safely and on time tomorrow and getting home in time to see the soccer game. So we're going to go through a little bit some of what these grades were. So the composite grade of D plus is made up of roads, D, and bridges, C plus. Many Americans will remember an August night 10 years ago in 2007. In the Twin Cities, people were driving across a heavily traveled bridge on I-35. Collapsed sending people crashing down into the river. 20 Americans lost their lives. 20 Americans lost their lives when that bridge collapsed. In my own state of Connecticut, people remember when the Mianus River Bridge collapsed on I-95, the major backbone of the entire Northeast Corridor. Fortunately, fortunately, the bridge collapsed in the middle of the night and only three people died. Had it been during the middle of the day, that number would have been far higher. But Mr. Speaker, America should not wait, nor should this Congress wait, until bridges collapse or trains derail until we fix our aging infrastructure. It is the backbone of what government is supposed to do. Our roads are congested. In 2014, Engineers estimate that congestion cost American commuters $160 billion in a single year. For the average commuter in an urban area, that was 42 hours of their lives, 42 hours, a full work week. So it's not just dollars and aggravation, it's polluted air, it's broken axles, but it is also time which for many Americans is the most valuable thing we have. We want to see our families. We work hard in this country. And we in Congress should be working harder to make sure that our hardworking people we represent can get home on time to see their families. So, so that's where we are. That's where we are with bridges and roads. I had a constituent come up to me in uh, the nearby city of Waterbury last week. We were looking at an aging infrastructure intersection and she said, you know what, I came over here to tell you that I hit such a big pothole last week, I've got a couple hundred dollar repair bill for my car and I don't have the money to pay for it. And you've got to tell those people in Washington we need to fix things so I don't have to worry about a pothole ruining my car and making me unable to pay my bills. Too many of our roads are structurally, too many of our bridges are structurally deficient. Almost four in ten of our bridges. 39% are 50 years old or older. That's the structural lifespan of a bridge, 50 years. I drive across some of those every single day, and nearly 10% of the nation's bridges are graded structurally deficient, which is to say they're really not safe. And it's not just bridges and roads that are in dire needs of repair. We also have our rail system. We saw from my colleague, Mr. Payne, that you know, rail systems are a problem. Our transit systems are in desperate need of upgrade. And passenger rail, we don't even have a full estimate of what that would take to bring it up to speed. Uh, we have passenger rail that runs through Connecticut. 100,000 people commute every single day. The commute right now from New Haven to Connecticut to New York City is as long as it was 100 years ago. Surely, surely America can do better. And it's not just passenger rail and freight rail. I can say, we should say a good word about freight rail here. Freight rail is the reason we're up to a D plus from a D. Freight has moved up to B, so we can be glad about freight's grade 
this past year. We also have airports. Now, I don't know how many of you have been through airports recently. If you have, you, will, you might even be surprised that we're up to a D and not lower than that. American airports are congested, many of them are aging, and are in need of significant work. Congestion at airports is growing. 24 of the top 30 airports in the U.S. are experiencing the, quote, Thanksgiving peak traffic volume once a week. That used to be a term that was used once a year. And across American airports across the country are serving two million passengers a year. I can tell you of recent time I landed in LaGuardia Airport in New York. Used to be considered one of the nation's shining examples. People came and arrived in LaGuardia and were amazed and impressed with this great country. One of the last times I was in LaGuardia Airport, I was greeted by a plastic, blue plastic tarp, duct taped to the ceiling, inside the terminal, funneled down into a 30-gallon trash can to collect the water that was leaking through the terminal. That is not the way a great country greets its own citizens or any other to one of the world's great cities. In addition to the work we need to do on our airports, we have our water infrastructure. This is our clean water system, and it's also our wastewater system. According to the most recent Clean Watersheds Needs Survey, the EPA reports that the total wastewater and storm, stormwater treatment capital needs in the next 25 years, $271 billion. That's billion with a B. And yet the federal government has been contributing less and less to that growing need to have, make sure that our rivers and streams and waterways are clean. And all of America saw last year what happened when one single community, Flint, Michigan, failed to add a single corrosion prevention agent to its clean water and ended up literally poisoning its children with lead. It's time for America to do better. There are costs when we don't invest in this country. I, I like to think of it more or less like America, the roof on America's house. Now, many of you may know, it's pretty exciting when you put an addition on your house, but it is not exciting to replace your roof. But if you don't replace your roof and it keeps leaking, ultimately you lose the entire house. The ceiling collapses. And that's where we are as a country right now. We have stopped fixing America's roof. We've stopped it in bridges and roads. We've stopped it in airports and rail. And it's time for us to get going. Now, I will tell you that I am encouraged by reports coming from the new administration about making a serious commitment to invest in America infrastructure. But there are some things we need to keep in mind when we're talking about American infrastructure. One is to remember that it used to be called by another name. It used to be called public works. There's a reason it was public works. There's a reason it wasn't private works. So I think it is certainly appropriate that we look to do public-private partnerships, to let the power of private investors to fix some of our aging infrastructure, and most importantly, to build some new infrastructure. But we should make no mistake, this country became great. It was transformed by the interstate highway system, literally linking America from end to end. But we cannot expect, nor should we think, that the basic public infrastructure of America is going to be able to be outsourced to financiers in New York City. If that were the case, they would have already done it. These are basic public works that we need real dollar investments. And I can assure the administration, there are many of us in Congress who are ready to move forward.